Hey guys, it's Dina, your mindset evolutionary here at FlyNubianQueen.com, the network for melanated women. Um, wow. I, I'm not quite sure where to begin. Um, very surprised. Yesterday, a little bit in shock to find out, of course, by now mostly everyone knows that Kobe Bryant passed away in a helicopter crash with his daughter. And um, I was kind of doing a little bit of self-care and taking in what was going on, you know, getting facts and information and kind of listening to other people's grieving and, and their take on Kobe Bryant's legacy. And um, death is, uh, it's really difficult to process and take within like a short amount of time. So I hope you guys will bear with me and forgive me as I kind of process some of this with you. Um, there'll probably be a few pauses in between as I'm, you know, kind of thinking about what I want to say, um, experiencing my feelings. And I want to model this for those of you out there who are feeling a lot of pain. Because it's so important that during this time, we take a step back and we grieve and we allow the feelings that we're having to flow through us. And I wanna let everybody know that it is okay. It is okay for us as a community to breathe and mourn this brother. It is okay for us to take a moment and let down our guard to secure our space, to secure a safe space, to just go and take a moment and grieve. If no one else has said that, I don't know if other queens have come on here and say that. said that. I think Simone Quezon may have said that amongst others. I wanna let the community know that it is okay for us to take some time, take a moment to grieve. I know there's a war going on out here. I understand that we as a community have a lot of things on our agenda in this political season, but we're, we're not gonna be any good on the battlefield if we don't take a moment to breathe. Self-care is the most important thing. Mental health and spiritual health is the most important thing. And what we also wanna do and I'm taking this note from Simone Quezon. It's something really poignant. She said, if you guys haven't watched her video on Kobe, please go and watch it. She is so real, so raw. And she gives us some great insight and reflection on the life of Kobe Bryant. And I got inspired by her to say, don't feed what you don't, do not feed what you want to die. Only feed the things you want to grow. So right now in this moment of reflection and mourning over the life and legacy of Kobe Bryant, there are some very potentially triggering, traumatizing things that are floating around on social media. Keep your boundaries intact. Choose your focus and refuse to feed those things that you want to die. I think Kobe gave us a very important lesson with that. And that's one of the reasons why I printed out, um, as you can see, I know some people out there like, girl, that is super tacky, but I don't care, okay? I don't know how to use the technology to be able to pull up in picture, uh, you know, <laughs> live streaming. I'm gonna learn it one day, just give me a moment. But in the meantime, I just wanted to be surrounded by pictures that speak to me about Kobe Bryant. I have to admit, I was not a fan. And it wasn't like I didn't like him or anything. I just, I'm not into basketball. Do you guys forgive me? A black woman that's not into basketball players. <laughs> I hope you guys can still relate to me, you know? 
But I, I just, you know, I, I knew he was amazing. Of course, I'd heard his name. Um, of course, I knew that, you know, he's one of the greatest players to ever bless the game. Um, and he was a part of the Lakers, that a lifelong Lakers um, member, if I'm not correct. I mean, if I'm correct, right? If I'm not someone, please correct me. And so during this time, I was having like a little bit of mixed feelings because I always mourn um, the death of, you know, any, any, anybody who was great, you're always a little touched when they die suddenly and tragically. Even if they've lived a great long life, you feel a little bit of a like, wow, okay, that person's not here anymore, you know? And then you start to reflect and you're like, well, who was this person? Because since I wasn't a fan, I really didn't have a reference point other than some of the things he achieved that was great, right? Um, on the basketball court. And I would just hear these things like se secondhand, you know? Thank you guys for all the hearts. I see so many hearts coming up there. You know, I don't like to get too overly emotional about these things, you know, because um, I feel like it's good to take a moment to grieve and breathe. And that's what I'm doing right now. But I needed some time to kind of process and understand who is Kobe Bryant. To me, Kobe Bryant, me and my friend were talking about it last night, and she pointed out to me because I was like, I don't really know anything about Kobe Bryant. What, what, what was going on with him? And she was like, I think one of the most important things that I know, and this is from a friend of mine, I'm, these are not my thoughts, so I'm sharing them with you because it touched me. She said, I think the most important thing that you can talk about, that you can touch on with your audience is Kobe Bryant's legacy. Of, rege of redemption, his legacy of redemption, and the fact that he did something that very few, you know, average men, much less celebrity men do when they're confronted with a mistake, when they're confronted with bad behaviors when they're confronted with accusations. He did something that very few have been able to achieve. And he was already great. He was already great for his basketball achievements. But this to me is more relatable. And this to me is what makes him a legend. He was falsely accused or wrongly accused. So that's debatable. That's debatable. And I leave space open for those who don't agree with that. People are entitled to their opinions. People are entitled to their feelings. But one of the things I want to highlight in remembering Kobe is his legacy of redemption. And as a black man, this is something that we as a community can take a note from. Let's put aside for one moment. Let's put aside the feelings that we may have about marrying out into the brown culture, all those sort of things. And let's just look at the totality of this man. Let's look at the, that at the totality of his legacy for family. Let's look at how he redeemed himself and was able to move forward. Family intact, legacy intact, achievements intact. To me, that is something to be highlighted and celebrated. Let's feed the things we want to see grow in our community. And let's cut off all the light, all the feed into things that we want to die. And he modeled that for us. He modeled that in a way that I don't think we've really seen. If someone can point out someone else who's been able to do that in the black community after, after being accused of rape, 
by a white woman, please, by all means, let's share that information. Those are the type of things we can celebrate in this time of grieving. The question I want to pose to the community is, yes, we understand sexual assault is huge right now. It's being brought into the national discussion and attention in all different areas, but especially in entertainment. Women need to be heard. They need to be given space. People need to be brought to justice. Absolutely. But can we also take a moment to understand and create space for those men who have potentially or knowingly or unknowingly or unconsciously or consciously committed a mistake or a crime? Is it possible that these men can ever be redeemed? Let's think about all our brothers who are in prison, falsely, or rightly so. This is a part of his legacy. He demonstrated and lived how to redeem, how to be redeemed from a mistake, how to be redeemed from a wrongdoing. That is, and get back to focusing on your family and, and focusing on your wife and creating something that could that that was hurt and traumatized and potentially broken damaged and bring it back and lift it up even stronger that is his legacy that is a huge part of his legacy redeeming redemption forgiveness love and family that's something i found touching about his story that's something that connected him to me in a way that basketball never could have the fact that this man was able to look at his actions take responsibility stick by his family, do what's right to make amends and keep moving forward so that he could be redeemed. He did the work, people. He did the work. This was a great man. This was a great man, not just because he could shoot balls on a basketball court. This was a great man because he could make a mistake, own it, check in with his wife, his kids, his family, his fans, and the larger community, and be redeemed. That's where I connect with Kobe Bryant and his legacy. We have to leave space for the men who have aggrieved us, who have assaulted us, who have offended us. We got to leave space for them, in particular, our men, our black men, to be redeemed. And this is an amazing, amazing example of that. Black men who have made mistakes and ended up in terrible situations, yes, they can be redeemed. And I want everyone to take a look at Kobe Bryant. And I want you to understand this part of his legacy. As we mourn him, it's not just about basketball. This is about someone who could admit to wrongdoing and misunderstanding and mistakes and adultery and the possibility of rape and, 
and also admitting to not knowing where the boundaries and the lines were. And then doing the work to be redeemed. First with the woman, he is uh, allegedly assaulted. Then with his wife, with his family, his girls, with the larger community. That is what we are celebrating. That's what I'm celebrating. Because, hey, I wasn't in the basketball. <laughs> I don't care about no basketball, y'all. I'm going to tell you for sure and for real. I can't care less about no basketball, okay? Um, if my man's into it, I'll sit next to him in the uh, stadium and cheer on and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know none of them players' names. I could care less. But what caught my attention about Kobe was his ability to be redeemed. And I want to read a couple of things to you guys <laughs> that just demonstrate how he was able to get through that. Do you see that smile? That is a man who's been through some things and came out on the other side of it even greater. This is the legacy of Kobe Bryant. A man who is redeemed. So my brilliantly beautiful gifted beings, Thank you for joining me here. And let me get into some of these quotes from Kobe before I go on about my day. Thank you guys for joining me. I am Dina Jacobs, your mindset evolutionary here at FlyNubianQueen.com, the network for melanated women. I guide women, black women, to freedom from negative conditioning. And you guys are my brilliantly beautiful gifted beings, and I'm so happy to see you today. Even though this is a day of mourning, make sure you are taking time to feel your feelings, to have a cry, to have a laugh, to do some reflection and check in with yourself. It's okay to put yourself first in this particular moment and feel what you need to feel. And thank you so much for joining me here at Fly Moving Queen. If you haven't all right, please. If you haven't already, please give us the thumbs up, the hearts, the likes, the subscribes, the share. Do not feed what you want to die. Celebrate this man as a great example of how someone can make a tragic, huge mistake in their life and still come back and own it and be redeemed. That's what I'm celebrating for Kobe. That's what I'm connecting with him and his family on. And I say, I'm so sorry for your loss, Vanessa and girls. But this great man has been redeemed. He's amazing when I think about what he said. Now let's get into his quote. For those of you who are feeling conflicted, this was the apology. Let me remind you of the apology and the admission of his mistake. This is from Kobe back in, I think it says somebody reposted this in 2016, okay? So I know, I'm not sure if that was the timeline for when this was actually issued. Um, so first, this is from Kobe. I want to apologize directly to the young woman involved in this incident. I want to apologize for her to her for my behavior that night and for the consequences she has suffered in the past. Although this year has been incredibly difficult for me personally, I can only imagine the pain she has had to endure. I also want to apologize to her parents and family members and to my family and friends and supporters and to the citizens of Eagle, Colorado. I also want to make it clear that I do not question 
the motives of this young woman. He said, I want to make it clear, I do not question the motives of this young woman. So he wasn't even trying to slut shame her or say she was out for money. This is a man that was taking responsibility in the face of tremendous consequences. He was standing before the community and saying, look, stand down. Do not go after this woman. I'm not questioning her motives. Then he says, no money has been paid to this woman. She has agreed that this statement will not be used against me in the civil case. So he was able to, through his attorneys, I'm sure, figure out some type of agreement to where there was some level of amicability to this, some level of, okay, we can come to some agreement. We can come to some place where we can sit and negotiate and talk this out and, and have an understanding. Then he goes on to say, although I truly believe this encounter between us was consensual, I recognize now that she did not and does not view this incident in the same way I did. He said, after months of reviewing discovery, listening to her attorney and even her testimony in person, I now understand how she feels that she did not consent to this encounter. So you listen to what he said. He admitted that there was a misunderstanding, that there was a mistake, that there was something that happened between two people that was not right. And he's taking ownership and responsibility. He says he doesn't see it that way. However, he recognizes from his own words, he says, I now, I recognize now that she did not and does not view this incident in the same way I did. After months of reviewing discovery, listening to her attorney and even her testimony in person, he listened to her in person. He opened his heart. He opened his mind to see her perspective on things, even though he did not feel he was wrong. He still opened himself up. And he said, I now understand how she feels that I did not, that she did not consent to this encounter. One of the things I got, I have shared with you in my mindset evolutionary talks is how it's so important according to psychiatric and psychological and social experts that women who have been assaulted be acknowledged by their perpetrators and by the society at large that something wrong took place, that a boundary was breached. He did that and he apologized for it. And I'm not saying that that is enough for some of these predators and some of these people and some of these men and, and and even women who have violated people, but it's a start in the right direction when it comes to healing. So what I'm celebrating here, what I'm saying is that this is a lesson that men and women can take, but in particular, black men, they're going through so much. You guys are going through so much right now. And there's a lot of gray area in some of these things. I'm not here to judge. What I'm here to show and demonstrate is the compassion, the empathy, and opening the doors for the possibility of being redeemed. And hear me when I'm saying, I'm not trying to say all oh, black men are wrong and blah, blah, blah. don't try me with that. What I'm saying is that when black men make mistakes, whatever they are, we have to leave and create space, not only for the women or the men or the boys or girls or whoever who has been aggrieved 
we have to leave the space for the person who was the aggressor or the person who made the mistake to be redeemed. It is to the benefit for all of our healing. He was not just great for what he did on the court, the basketball court. He was great. He was just a great human being. He was just a great human being. That's the legacy that I'm celebrating for this life of Kobe Bean Bryant. Kobe Bean. <laughs> That makes me laugh. It makes me smile to think that his middle name was Bean. I had forgotten about that. Um, I want to read a few of her comments before I jump out. Let's see how long I've been talking because, you know, I can get the yip yapping on here. But I'm glad you guys hung in there with me. <laughs> um, 25 minutes? Okay, let me try to wrap this up in 30 minutes. I'm trying to do shorter videos for everybody. Uh, let's see, I have 32 comments and I'm excited. I'm going to go to the bottom and go back up. Um, terrible time to be talking about this. Shaking my head, says Daryl McClellan. Lots of people are talking about it. Um, so you find that it's a terrible time to talk about how this man's life was a legacy that was about redemption. I don't know what better time to celebrate the fact that this brother gave us one of the greatest examples I've ever seen in life of how someone can make a mistake and then be redeemed. That is a lesson. <laughs> that is a lesson and something that should be celebrated and um, that black men and women in the community can take a note from to see how someone came back from the edge of destruction with his family intact, <laughs> with his legacy intact. Tiger Woods hasn't been able to do that. OJ hasn't been able to do that. None of these people have been able to do that except Kobe. That's what makes him great. And so since the conversation is already out there, I'm not feeding into the negative aspect of it. I'm feeding into the aspect of it that should be given life. He was redeemed. And I showed you how he did it. Not just because I'm breaking it down. He even gave you the mindset in his statement of apology of how he felt he didn't do anything wrong, but then by listening to her, hearing her, examining the facts from her perspective, bringing those two perspectives together, he understood how there was a disagreement, how she could see that she had been violated. He apologized for that aspect of it. And he also told the public that he does not question her motives. So he got that there was a disagreement. There was a mistake that he made on his part in understanding where she was coming from. And he opened himself up to seeing where he was at fault in her eyes from her perspective. And then he went to his family, his wife. He apologized, made amends with her. First, he made amends, tried to make amends with the woman who felt violated. Then he went and made amends to his family, his children, his wife. Then he made amends to the larger community of Eagle, Colorado. Then he pulled it even further out to society. He was redeemed. So Darren McClellan, we're having a disagreement right now that this is a terrible time to talk about this, but what better time to talk about this man's very big and broad legacy than right now when everyone is grieving. We gotta remember the greatness of who this man was in his totality. That's the good, the bad, and the ugly. But in looking at all those aspects, we want to elevate and celebrate the good that came out of some of the bad and the ugly. And that is this. 
He's demonstrating to black men how to make a comeback. Some of the black men who have been in the penitentiary, some of the black men who have been ousted or identified or accused of different things. Kobe is showing you how to be redeemed, how to get past your mistakes, how to move forward on things. And this is not just about sexual assault. It's so much greater than that. It's about moving forward and getting over failures, pitfalls, mistakes, not getting bogged down in the negativity. As Simone Kaysen said, do not feed what you want to die. Only focus on the things you want to grow. And he knew that he had more to do in his life. He wasn't going to be taken down by a mistake. That's what made this man great. Being able to see the mistake, being able to hit the road bump, realizing it, recognizing it, seeing his part in it, listening and being open and empathetic and compassionate to those he may have hurt. And then recognizing that, apologizing, doing what he needed to do to make it right and moving forward. So let me get to some more comments. But again, thank you, Darren McClellan, for even bringing that up. I appreciate what you have to say. I really do. And I welcome comments and questions that are different from mine. TJ says his father called him Jelly Bean Brown. I know, isn't that cute? Oh, it just, it just warms my heart. Like, Jelly Bean. He had a little Jelly Bean head, too, if you look at him real good. TJ said, where was Kobe Bryant from? What team did he get drafted to? You know what? I'm not sure because, you know, I said at the beginning, TJ, I didn't follow basketball. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of basketball. So I only, these are, this is the part of him that I connect, the part of his story that I connect to. Alicia Smith says, and a black man at that. That's right, honey. Javon Harris says, speak on it. TJ says, Tiger Woods just won a championship. He's making a comeback too, you know? But it's in a much different way. Kobe bounced back quickly. And I'm showing you guys how that happened. It was through his, his self-reflection, his maturity, his admission of where he could have been wrong, even though he felt that he wasn't wrong, being able to empathize and have compassion for the people he potentially hurt, opening himself up to their perspective, and then realizing that there was work to be done in healing and reaching out and bridging the gap between himself and his alleged victim, between himself and the greater community, between himself and his wife and his family. That's why they're still together or were together. That's why they were able to move forward and he was able to still keep doing great things. He got continued to have his endorsements and everything. Look, Tiger Woods lost all his endorsements. People were shunning him. He was a mess for a while. He didn't do the same thing. So I'm saying this is a blueprint right here. This is a part of this man's legacy. I'm about to get out of here. I'm going to read a couple more uh, comments. Yvette Gary said, let Kobe rest in peace. We all make mistakes. Just let him rest. We heard about this already. Um, I'm just sharing my perspective, Yvette Gary, and, and this is part of my grieving. So if you've had enough, then um, I understand that. And you should, you should take care of yourself and you should click off. You should click off and, you know, grieve in your own way. But thank you for your comment. Javon Harris Smith, this is a definition of a true man. No one is perfect, but he owned it. Spread the word, people. Share this video. This is how we can look at this. This is how we can answer back, not that we have to or need to or should even focus any attention on these people. But if somebody comes to you with that foolishness, send them a link to this video. This man has been redeemed. TJ says, what children? This happened 17 years ago. What ch which child of Kobe was born? Well, you know, it's something that's going to be out there in the media. So even though his children may not have been born at that time, TJ, thank you for bringing that up. Um, you know that kids have social media and everything lives on social media. So you know at some point in time, these kids have had to hear about this. So the fact that he demonstrated and modeled a way, a path towards redemption for his mistake. He's got daughters, so that has a lot of meaning. 
Elisha Smith says, I understand you, sis, and I'm glad and appreciative for his redemption. Don't get enough of this from us. I get I get it. Condolences to Vanessa and the girls. Sorry about Gigi. This was still a man who succumbed with his daughter on what he considered his redemption by investing in his children, wife, and legacy. Absolutely. You never heard him about him cheating on anybody on his wife after that. Now, we don't know all the details of his personal life, but from what we know, he got it together after that. Um, TJ says the NBA assigned good attorneys to Mr. Bryan in 2003. They sure did. And probably um, they assigned some people to coach him and help him to understand how to move forward and how to get back on the path of, of righteousness. And that's what a good team should do. <laughs> that's what they should do and help these brothers. They're making all this money off of them. It should be more. It should be about more than just a paycheck. It should be about their mental, physical, and spiritual well-being as well. And then this was a case where people got it right. The investment had been made in him, and they should protect their investment. And he needed to protect his investments in his family, in his legacy. And he did that. Um, TJ says, I know about Kobe. I remember when he came to the game. I know you did, TJ. Um, TJ said... Uh, oh, uh, Phyllis X. Lewis said he was part of the Lakers. TJ says, no, Kobe was drafted by the Charlotte Hornets. Okay, baby. Um, TJ again says, Kobe's father was called Jellybean, not Kobe. Okay, well, I don't know. I read your comment. I guess I read it wrong. I apologize. <laughs> I hope you forgive me. Um, Javon Harris Smith says, amen. Um, I think he learned from that on how not to treat women. Okay? Yes. Um, Let's see. We got a couple more. Uh, let's see a couple more comments from earlier. Um, Teresa Petty says, good morning. Life is short and we have to start loving each other more and we must send love out to all the family who are involved in prayers to them as well. So I think we're going to end it on that. God rest his soul, bless his soul and his daughter. And uh, for the other people who were there as well, God bless them and their souls. May they rest in power and peace. I thank everyone for being here. This is Dina Jacobs, your Mindset Evolutionary, here at FlyNubingQueen.com, the network for ne melanated women. Please follow me, Dina Jacobs Flaunts on Instagram, Dina Jacobs Rants on YouTube. Um, give it a like, a subscribe, a share. And I thank you again, my brilliantly beautiful gifted beings, for joining me here this morning to celebrate the life and the legacy of redemption of Kobe Bean Bryant. I love you all. Hugs and kisses to you. Enjoy your morning.